Today, we're going to talk about have you ever decided to make money with a business or a hustle? Now, why is this important? The active and concentrated decision to make money. You have many people who are attempting to make money, but they're, um, they're not making money. Hold on, hold on. Let me go into advanced because I have a feeling <laughs> this is private. All right. Let's make sure this sucker is, ah, uh -huh. there we go. There we go. I'm going to repeat myself a little bit here because I had to make sure that we were actually cooking with some gas. All right. One of the big issues with making money is people don't make the decision to make money. There is hope. There is prayers. There is game, there's talking about it, but there's never a firm decision. If you wanted to start making money in any endeavor, what is your plan? That's the first sign that you haven't made a decision. If you don't have a plan, you don't have a business plan, you don't have some type of framework written down somewhere, you are not serious about making money. You've not made the intentional decision to make money with a business or a hustle. Now, I know that this will seem a little crazy, but the decision to write down that you want to make money, the decision to intentionally capture your intent from your subconscious mind and put that with action and activity is so important. You have a lot of people out here who have, they're playing around with making money. They're kind of, it's, it's like if it's a hobby or if it's fun, that's cool. But to actually push on making money to actually turn into a real thing, to take it out of the hobby, to take it out of the, I can do it whenever I want to, you make it a real intangible thing. Let me see. Is this live acting up? Because once again, I'm doing all kinds of new stuff, so it may get a little weird. But it may not get a little weird. Just checking. Just checking. All right. So who here has decided to make money? You have a plan. You've prepared. And you have some money set aside. Those are three things you need to do when you decide to make money. Many people are coming from it from an almost desperate situation. Rent's due tomorrow. I need $500. That is not a plan to make money. That is a hope. That's a wish. That's a desperation because going back to planning, if you were planning on making money, everybody knows what day they rent is due. Why would you wait until day 28? 29 30 to get busy that's a lack of planning that's a failure to plan so part of this trajectory and we're going to talk about a lot of this in investing yourself how many people have set aside not bill money not collective money but at least 500 dollars to start their business or to start their hustle what's going to happen in the future and I was having this conversation with another client who used to do Amazon FBA. And I said, it's going to get to the point that you're not going to be able to start Amazon FBA and wait for it, scale with less than twenty to $50,000. And if you do it with 20, your scaling needs to be perfect. You don't need to make any mistakes. Your research needs to be rock solid. It's moving away from starting Amazon FBA with 500 bucks and then reinvesting profits. And this is why it's happening there. Do you know the amazing selling machine has made 82 or $90 million? I think it's, I think it's 82 in the last five years. Yes. The amazing selling machine, this course for how to sell on Amazon has made 
$82 million or $90 million in the last five years. There are Amazon sellers who are making more money. I'm actually going to, well, I can't show you one. But Google PharmaFax, PharmaPax, they are a very large Amazon FBA seller. I think they're doing like $500 million a year. But here's the background. The guy who started it was a pharmacist with two pharmacies. He had already had money. He already had the su supply chain. He already had the contracts. And he went in with some partners and they spent $750,000 to buy their first warehouse. Now let's examine this. Guy was already a business owner. He had a lot of money already. He had partners to chip in money to go to the next level. And I think they're one of the, if not the biggest Amazon FBA seller, they're in the top five. So $500 million, wait a minute, you had the cost of goods, fees. So that $500 million is not a pure, I guarantee you from a profit standpoint, the amazing selling machine made more money. I guarantee you, if you were to break it down, because typically uh, the best Amazon sellers have a 25 to 30% margin and there it is. 25% of 500 million, 100 million. See what I mean? And you're going to see, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but a lot of the Amazon FBA channels, courses, apparently Derek of the struggle. I don't know. I haven't checked. So don't quote me on that. I think he has stopped making YouTube videos. Don't know if it's true or not, but I audited his site and the majority, he made six figures on Amazon FBA. Um, he really did, but he made millions with his course. And what you're starting to see is the audience is becoming more sophisticated. They're starting to see exactly what's going on. They're starting to, um, notice certain things and there's nothing wrong with selling courses. I sell courses, but I don't sell courses to Amazon FBA because I did Amazon a long time ago. I just saw where it was going because you're going to need so much money to start an Amazon FBA business. And this is something else too. There was this one couple, husband and wife, I forget their names. He was a medical supply salesman. And I heard it from her mouth. We took the bonus money, which means if you know medical supply salesmen, they make bank. Six figures easy, and she was working, but they took the bonus money, bonus money, which was probably 20 to 50K. I don't know what it was, but think about <clears throat> if you had a high income, you had low bills, and then you got a bonus of 30K, boom, to put in your business, and you didn't have to mess with any money that was coming into the household. This is one of the reasons that they were able to grow so fast is their business was able to breathe and consume money and not disturb the household budget. And I've been seeing this all over the place. I've been seeing this with these fire people. I've been seeing it. And it's essentially they'll preach it as it's something for an average person to do, but I'm getting off track. Um, essentially you got to get into the mindset, what I call a make more money mindset and be real with yourself. And the realness is, Look, I'll go ahead. 2009, I started this YouTube channel. I had money saved up to live on. I worked for six months without a salary or any income. Six months full time. This is where you need to be because what I'm starting to see, because I'm doing so much research, that the average person is literally screwed and as long as you're average and as long as you want things to come down to you, you're going to be forever screwed. And the screwing is going to get worse because Amazon FBA, which is still an opportunity for some people right now, eBay, uh, eBay has gone crazy. I got to the point where I have outsourced my, you know, stuff I want to sell on eBay. I don't mess with it. It is, I had 
an iPhone, I had an Apple Watch, I had another iPhone, and a mini Mac. Seven auctions, and out of the seven auctions, I had three major problems. eBay did not used to be that bad. It, it, it is crazy. So another part of what you have to do is to really, really concentrate. And this is something that we're going to talk about in the basic, well, investing yourself. And it's going to be called the principle of income acceleration. This isn't investing. This isn't this saving money is part of it. But the, the thing to, to get you over the hump, you got to bust for about two years. And I know many people don't want to hear that. They're looking for immediate, quick, fast, like the stream I did earlier today. Three years, and now my client is in a position to get seven and eight figure loans. Three years, and this is from a person who was already making six figures. So you'll see these people who are saying, hey, you can get $400,000, $500,000 in business credit. And depending upon if it's capital credit, capital credit would be um, visas, MasterCards, line of credit, and loans that you can go to the bank or the financial entity and convert that to cash. You ain't not, you're not getting 450 and $500,000 on cash. Uh, even when it was easy, when it was easy, like six months, you go ahead and get your LLC. You go ahead and sign it with Duns. It still took you a few years. If you knew what you were doing to get up to 250 in unsecured credit two to three years even if you know and this one it was easy and now maybe it's moved to this easier point i don't know because um one of the things that i'm getting away from is i'm not going to teach you stuff so you can harm yourself i know that's a very lofty ambition and essentially i know where people are i know what i went through and i know what you need to go through you need to generate more money and match the money that you have. Just having this huge, you know what's gonna happen? Let's say that you got this business credit. Let's say you started January and by June, you have $500,000 worth of unsecured money that you can turn to cash, money that you can spend anyway. You can spend on a car, you can spend on a house, you can spend on real estate. And you got that money, but you didn't have no business experience. What do you think is going to happen? What happens to NFL players who sign these million dollar contracts? NBA players who sign these million dollar contracts? Soccer players who sign these million dollar contracts? Rappers who sign these million dollar contracts? Actors who sign these million dollar contracts? So many of them go broke because they are not accustomed to handling money. That's what's going to happen because well, because first of all, once you get the money, then your ego is just going to take over. It's like, yeah, I got 500,000 business credit. They trusted me with just my name, man. I got a high score. I don't have no income. If I ever used all this, I couldn't pay it back, but I got it, man. I got it. So your ego is going to override any common sense, any practicality. And this is why anytime someone says, hey, I got $10,000. Uh, one guy emailed me. He says when his, his parents had died and when they sell the estate, he's going to get probably 350 k He doesn't have any debt. And he's like, where should he put his money? And I told him, put your money back in the bank and sit on it. Find a business that you want to do. And if someone has one of these businesses, since you have 350 k you don't have no bills, go work for them. He, he was just blown away. He's like, I, it's like, you don't have the experience. And this is why when you start a smaller business and you develop these sales skills and these branding skills and these marketing skills and these management skills, you're, you'll still make the mistakes, but your mistakes are going to be so small. You know, imagine making a mistake. Let's say your business is doing $500 a month and you make a $250 mistake. It hurts, but it's not devastating. Now, let's say your business is doing a million and you make a $400,000 mistake. 
I did that. I'll tell you how it happened. I was selling office furniture. I was good at getting in. I was good at closing. I was good at getting the check. One project, I did not measure it correctly. So we had to go back to the factory, refabricate all of these cubicles, and it was a $250,000 mistake. I had to, because this was the only way I was going to get the money out of them, so I had to fix it. Couldn't charge them more money for my mistake. And that's why I ended up, if I if everything had went cool, I would have made about 300, 300, maybe close to 400K my first year. Mm-mm. And the only reason that didn't take me out is earlier in GC Solutions, I was selling the used office furniture. Remember JDA? And I still had like close to 300K in the bank with the money that I was, you know, the 35K. So that's, that's the reason I didn't go bankrupt. That's it. And this is why I was like, I need to find some more used stuff to sell. Everyone's like, man, you know, just stick it out. You know, you're a black man selling office furniture at a high level. There's only five of you in Atlanta. And there was just some in me. I was like, I am not going to bear the weight of the, the whole group. I am just not going to bear the weight. And I'm going to say some stuff. And y'all may unsubscribe. The community did not support me in my darkest day. Family? Mm-mm. One friend visited me in that boarding house. It wasn't the community supporting me. It, you know what supported me? Me. I had to figure out a way to get out of that situation by my damn self. And once I started to become selfish, and as a business owner, as someone out here trying to make money, someone trying to hold the line, you need to become selfish with your time, selfish with your money, selfish with your resources. Because once you start making money and adopting these principles that we talk about here at Money, Income, and Profit, you're going to become a magnet for the disenfranchised, the needy, the handout. You will just, these folks will like, boom, like flies to meat. They will be on you. And what they're trying to do is pull you back into the bucket because I figure, and most of you, if you can get all your debt paid, and you can get that one year where you do 150 and 200k. That is your leap year. That's your that's the the pivot, that's the point where you just bust out of your previous class. But if you loaning everybody money, you taking care of big mama, you are going out and get daddy's diabetic medicine. Now ask yourself this, how did these people survive before you got that money? I'm going to tell you something. I I think I mentioned it before. When I was writing my first book and then I had reached this point of, I was good. I didn't need any money from everybody. I, all my stuff was paid off. And it was like, this is my time to take my a stab at my dream. And my mother got sick. Second time this happened. Uh, at one point she was legally blind. And for three years, I was the sole source of income for the family. Not a problem. I was young. I was able to overcome it. But here it is again. I got all this money in the bank. I got my life set up. And I had to make this decision. And this is where you need to be selfish. So they came to me and it's like, what you going to do? I was like, no, I, I did that before. What you're going to do is you and the other one going to get together and y'all going to work this out. Because I took care of all of y'all. At this point, I became disowned. I became the bad son. I got talked about because I had set myself up to be free. And there were other people. Remember what I said? You will attract the needy, the disenfranchised, the broke. They will come to you. And if I had did what they wanted to, me to do, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. There would be no YouTube channel because there never would have been a book. And the book was... The leap year, the, the lunch pad for all of this. Think about it. And many of you are going through this right now. Many of you are like, you got 10K squared away. You're driving a Honda. You manage your money correctly. And you've just been a little bit too loose with the lips. And now people are like, hey, man, can I get 1,000? Can I get 200? Can I get 500? You know, we boys, you got, you know, I need. 
and they will literally clip your financial wings and they put you in a very hard spot because you want to be free. You want to make more money. You want to actually control your destiny. They will literally drag you down. And now we're at a certain situation where, you know, because and essentially once you get on this process, you're not going to have one leap year. And when I say leap year, this is when you make a big jump from your previous income. Um, my first leap year was when I wrote my first book. It was just fascinating that I wrote this book that came from my mind. My mind was the factory. The internet was the distribution system. And it made sick. I was just amazed. And a lot of people like $62,000 ain't a lot for me. That was like heaven, you know, for someone who wanted to be a writer, to be a communicator, to actually put out a book and have people buy it and not have people just buy it, but like it and drive from it and make money. You, that feeling was just so powerful. That was my first leap year. I leapt out of working, trading time for money because in the storage auction business, I was trading time for money, but the money was very nice, but it was still trading time for money. A doctor trades time for money. A dentist trades time for money. They have very high incomes, but if they stop working, and this is why you see the doctors who are really making money, they go ahead and get other doctors to work for them and they form a practice. Uh, I remember Dr. Bat. That was his name. Dr. I think Thomas Bat. Dude had like five doctors working for him. I remember one day I was at his desk and I saw his financial statement. And the office manager was like, hey, hey, you get away from that. But it was too late. I already saw it. Dude had 500K in this one uh, mutual fund. He had a million in another mutual fund. He was making that money because he was the manager. He wasn't just a regular doctor. He was a manager. So he actually had a leap year as a doctor. And we'll talk a lot about this leap year because my first leap year, the book, 6290, then boom. The, the million dollars that was the second leap year which set the stage for my mantra i did not get out of poverty I, let's be really clear i grew up in abject poverty there would be people I, I mean i just thought this was so bad that they would like literally go in the weeds and relieve themselves like the folks in india do on the streets that's how poor my community was I remember some kids, I'm not going to say their name, but they had a refrigerator door as their front door. This is what I grew up in. We didn't have running water in the house. I remember when they put the plumbing in and dug the, the, the ground up for the septic tank. I remember all that. So to go from that to salesman, you know, I've had several leap years. And see, this is the thing, because uh, when I did that video about the average person topping out on income at 37, I can tell you why. It's not a lack of intellect. It's not a lack of ability. They literally stop learning. They stop being active. And at the age of 32, I got cast out of the matrix. And then I went in learning mode. I am still in learning mode. Someone asked me what books am I reading? Since I'm getting into creating this financial portal, I'm not reading any finance books. I'm not reading any of that stuff because I don't want to take someone else's essence. So the best way to do it is not to read it. And just to derive off of the principles that got me out of abject poverty to living in the million dollar neighborhood with only bill is a house. And that's something else too. Once you learn these principles, you'll be able to live where you want, get what you want, and not be in debt. Because when you make more money, this, like I said, for most people, 100K, 150K, you are good. And this is someone who's married with a family. For most people, you can get the car you want, you can get the house you want, you can live where you want, your kids go to private school. And that's where, you know, I figure that most of us can get to within two to seven years. Not working the job. It ain't going to happen working the job. It's not going to happen in the stock market and all those other things. But essentially, what I'm talking about is accelerated income and making more money and casting out the agents of destruction. 
I don't think you know, and I didn't understand this. And I'm not gonna get into the details because this channel, you know, I'm gonna, it's not about that. But when I went into a state of extreme abundance, my energy changed. Like the Craigslist protocols. Because until I did the channel, a lot of people just thought, he just talking junk. He ain't really do that. And when I started showing receipts, people were like, what the my God? Alan Roger Curry, you know, he's, he's one of my friends. I showed him some receipts even before I did the channel. He was like, good Lord. Because my energy changed, I became an antenna for other things. And this is a very important thing. If you're living the way you don't want to live, it's an energy thing. It's not an intellect thing. It's not a money thing. It's an energy thing. And going through this process of making more money is going to change your energy. And then, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the gauntlet. <laughs> During this period, it's going to be rocky. And the more people that you have coming after you, the more stuff you go through, the greater the transformation will be. I'm serious. I went through a lot. And many of you are going through it. I saw some of the earlier comments and you're going through it right now. And It'll, it'll, it'll push on you so much that you may want to quit because it's just too much. You know, you, you were living your life. You were you know, going to work, hanging out with your friends, doing what you needed to do. Now, all of a sudden, you have all of this hate. You have all of this drama. It's a good thing. The more hate, the more drama. And I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. There was a few times I was going to quit this YouTube channel. That's what they want. They want you to come back to them. They want you to be normal. They want you to be regular. They want you to be exceptional because the more exceptional you are, the more basic you make them look. And that's a problem. All right. So let's see how this is working. All righty. <laughs> What's up, Drupal? <laughs> He's like preaching up in here. Let's see. What's up, Charles? Rocky Kids, Agent J. Pool, Denise, Bobito, Agent J. Pool. The plan is action. The war chest is growing, and I'm prepared to level up. And the wolf is not at the door. Uh, all right, all right. What's up, Wolf Flow? Hey, with Cole, Israel. Oh, E Rock three four four four. Earl Nightingale lead the field. Is the truth, man. Don't worry about Wolf Flow. Don't worry about the name. That's just a mental hang up. You know, you need to find the right name. Sam Walton named the company Walmart. A lot of people used to talk junk about Walmart. Now you say Walmart, people are like, ooh. Don't worry about the name. Get started. <laughs> Enforce software. All right, Anthony, getting their real estate. What's up, Crypt Junkie? All right, you making stuff with your vinyl cutting corporate, okay? <laughs> I have 17K, but I still feel broke. 17K is more money than 80%, well, let's say about 85% of the people in this country have in their savings account, and it's almost as much as many people have in their IRA. That ain't broke. You've done yourself a great service and just keep adding money to it. What's up, Christian? What's up, Silver New Jack? Trending business? No. No, they don't. They wanna they wanna talk junk about you, man. What's up, Reggie Lee? Uh yes, he still does that. He he has a stationary detailing store. And you know, we talked about this because the landlord would never sell him the land. Now, I know why, because he's kind of stuck there because that's where everybody knows he is. If he were to move, he would lose half his business, if not more. What's up, Victoria Jackson? What's up, Steve? Kevin Chin, what's up? Thank you, Victoria. Tim, uh, let's see. Tim A, my leaf pure just happened last year. I quit my job last year, May 2008. Took five months off of myself. Got a new job making more money. Didn't, doesn't that feel good? 
that you can take five months off. Not to talk junk about the federal employees who were held hostage, but most people need to be like Tim, where they could take five months off and the world doesn't come crashing down. So congratulations. What's up, Vito? Swoop man. Okay. <laughs> you freezing? You freezing, guru? Hey, just watch the channel. Um, my goal is to put out way more content. So that that's what we're doing. Because there's a lot of stuff that I've been trying to get straight and demons because see i'm i'm on the verge of another leap year and see this is something else long as you i think it was brian tracy if you want to watch some go back and watch brian tracy's old stuff i mean this here on youtube and i remember i used to listen to him and i was in that boarding house and he said something that was just crazy because they have a very dry and matter of fact way of speaking he says, personal development will triple your income. And he talked about it. And this is how I went into these sales jobs. And it was like, oh, okay. Now, because the thing is, I had the information, but I didn't have the vehicle. I had all this information running around my head, but I had no vehicle. And this is where a lot of you are, you know, and it's, you got to find your vehicle. You got to find your way. That's on you. But when I found my way and I started to employ these principles, you know what some I used to do? I used to write handwritten notes to everyone that bought stuff from me. And I got this because when I used to sell cars at Union City Chrysler Plymouth, I don't even think it's down there anymore. There was this old salesman and he had like all these gift cards, and not gift cards, but happy birthday cards, anniversary cards, because he had this book with all his customers' anniversaries in there. And you know how, how many of y'all ever worked at a car dealership? You know, like the new peas, y'all up there, when someone comes up, it's called a up, and people just like descend on these people. I don't know if they still do it this way, but this way they used to do it. And he never did that. He never did that. He was just like, dude would have people, and it's like, I'm, I'm looking for Carl. Just like, they wouldn't even talk to him when they come in, he'd hug him and everything. Carl was probably selling 45 to 50 cars a month based upon relationships. He had been there forever. Yeah. Uh, Brian Tracy, Earl Nightingale, Lead the Field, and a very good book to get, which will go into the negative thought video. I should have mentioned it. It's The Power of Your Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph E. Murray. Because see, I got this book at a really good time in my life. I didn't have much money. I had none but time. And I didn't realize, because I was just mad. I had no money. I was living with this boarding house. I was living in the hood. I almost got jacked and became a statistic. So I used to sit in my room and read and listen to Earl Nightingale and listen to lead, you know, read, lead the field and just read it over and over and over and over again. And at some point you got to come out of information mode. You got to have this information and start to put it somewhere and into something. And that's when the results will happen because for you, let's say you're making the the low end of American income. Let's say you're making 30, 32. If you can double your income in two years, move yourself up to 64, you will feel the difference. And then if you can double that from 64 to 120, your life will change. You will be like, oh, this is different. All right. Keep building because in the beginning, it's going to be hard. And to be full disclosure, building a YouTube channel that makes money is vastly different than building a YouTube channel that has views and influence. What's up, Jeff? Yeah, because there, there's a lot of ways that you can make money. There's a lot of ways how you can put stuff together. There's a lot of ways how you can start to move yourself because once again, uh, in the courses, I'm putting stuff that I went through and I'm putting the information in that I developed because 
let's take Craigslist. As soon as it came to land, I jumped on it. I was like, what's this thing? Craigslist. It was all engineers and techies. I got so much free stuff off that list. It was ridiculous. Why? High income. The techie people were high income. They were engineers, developers, and it was just amazing. And the Craigslist advertising model, probably someone else figured it out somewhere else in the country, but they didn't have my supply chain. I was getting 15 to 20 units a month or you know, you can't do it on eBay now. Um, maybe you can, I don't know. But buying $10 units and listing 200 items on eBay, which is a lot of work, and making 700 800 1200 We never made our consistent money off of the big hits. The big hits are nice. The stuff is clean. Our model was, if I buy this unit for 10 can I make two or 300 bucks? If I buy this unit for 100 can I make five, six, 700 None of this home run stuff. Just consistent cash flow. What's up, brother man? Yeah, audiobooks. Because the thing is, you ha and I'm going to tell you how to consume information. Listen to one audiobook three to five times. Then take the principles of that audiobook and put them into your life. And one of the things that has happened, and I've read so many books over the years that I will still read, but I have a huge database of knowledge. And, you you know, it's funny. Stuff that I read as a kid. Like, I used to read these books about guns. I, that information did not become relevant to me until I started getting all these guns out of these units. Which I hear, you don't find a lot of guns in units anymore. Very interesting. Is a Black Caesar? Yeah, because how you talk to yourself, Cody, is very, very important. Very, very important. How you have to self-talk, how when you, you, like, let's say you're having a bad day. You need to start talking yourself off the ledge, as I call it. Like, you know what? This was just a bad event. The rest of the day is going to be fantabulous. The rest of the day is going to be good. Because you've seen that person. They've had a bad event happen in the morning. Then some more stuff happened. And then they just like pushing this load of bad events all across their life. And they're just, I stay away from miserable people. If they're miserable and it's like, man, it's, I'm like, Hey man, that's too bad for you. I'm going to be over here until you get more positive because these people will disturb your groove. And, uh, what's that Kendrick Lamar? Don't, don't mess up my mood or something like that. Done. So definitely see more gig economy things happening within the next time. Oh, uh, there's going to be a video that I'm going to call it. It's going to be dealing with the gig economy because where we're heading as a culture, that's going to be a norm for people to do Uber, do Tash Rabbit, and something else. This is people. It's going to be people's full time money. That's why you need to be a producer. That's why you need to make something, create something, and sell something. Butween, uh, don't kill my vibe. Thanks, Timmy. No, I have not. I have moved on from that. I have to explain something. You see the direction that the channel's gone into, and you see the direction the channel used to be in. I used to watch that show and get mad. And I realized that just wasn't healthy and productive, so I just stopped watching it. Um, and once I wiped my hands of storage auctions, I never went back. I have people who keep trying to drag me into it, but I've had days where I made more money in one day than I've had, than I made in the month selling stuff out of storage units. And this is with a partner and this is with employees. So I, I, I ain't never going back. You can't get me back on the plantation. No, nah, Toby, I'm over here. I got the gold tooth lesson. Free men used to wear a gold tooth as a symbol that they were free. That's how it got started. So that's it. Um, uh, Black Caesar, this is what you do. You sit your, your uh, nephews down and say, look, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. 
right now you're young you're beautiful you're fantabulous you, you look good you need to try as many things as possible because see they don't know and i think it's really unfair for people to expect someone to know what they want to do with their life in 16 18 i mean they could start a hustle they could start making some money but what got me was i tried a lot of different things and i kept coming back to writing i kept coming back to communication so that was my thing but you know tell them to start a lot uh between the picking business seems saturated I, I could not tell you what's going on with picking. I, I couldn't tell you recent. I had recent experience with eBay and I know what, I know what direction Amazon's going in. Watch five years from now, you're not going to be seeing all these people like, Ooh, you could start with 500 bucks. No, they're gonna be like, you're going to need 10, 15. And then they're going to like, Oh, you're going to need 20, 25. And, oh, you're going to need 50. Amazon FBA is going to become like a traditional franchise business model because there's so many people into it. Remember, the amazing selling machine made 82 and 90 million dollars in five years. Five. Uh, Tim A, keep putting it in the bank. Keep putting it in the bank. What's up, Maria? Well, once again, let's, let's take that statement. The picking business seems saturated. And when I first started out there on the storage auction trail, the old heads used to get mad when new people came out because there was more competition. And they used to say similar stuff. One thing that helped me was I had, I was trained and I never looked at the storage auction business as just something to do or as a hobby. I looked at it as like, how can I systemize this? This is where I came up with buying profiles. I guarantee you, if you look at the picking business differently, there's plenty of money in the picking business. You just got to pick, get it, pick what you're going to do. Oh, I believe ride share is the future. Absolutely. You're going to have a lot of people who are just never going to own the car. I mean, seriously, uh, I know of a young lady who takes Uber to work at home because it cost her 480 bucks a month. She says, my car payment was 600 plus insurance and gas. She said, I'm saving money taking Uber. Ron S., if you had 10K, would you invest in tomorrow? I, I actually have more than 10K. First of all, let's remove money from the equation. First thing you should do, I don't care if you have a million dollars in the bank. What you should do is get experience in that business the experience is going to be the difference between being successful and not being successful um, ten thousand dollars is great money for attitude add another 10 you got 20k leave it in the bank i know people oh you're losing money um if you're accelerating your income you're making moves the time you leave that money in the bank one two years you're not going to lose a lot of buying power Delivery Life Baby Products. You got all kinds of stuff out there. Let me see how this stream is looking. It's a little bit clearer. I got to get these lights a little better. But I'm just going to let y'all know that you got to decide to make money. It's an intentional decision. And once you start to decide, and what is deciding to make money? You have a plan, you have experience, you have money. Because let's say, all right, let's say you're, uh, you're doing storage auctions and you have a monthly budget of $5,000, but you got your 10 or 15 or 20K in the bank. And then you're out there and you've got experience, you've been buying units for two years, and then it, it, this perfect storm happens. None of the whales are there, you're there with some noobs, and there's like five beautiful units. And your bank branch is around the corner. You know you can get that stuff. You know you can sell it quick. So now you're in the position to go to be hyper. Because this is one of the things I noticed. And a lot of people used to think we were crazy. I noticed the people who.
who were spending big money on units, consistently spending money, they had high cash flow. They consistently spent money because pretty much like venture capitalists, a venture capitalist may bet on 10 businesses. All it takes is one to win. He get his money back plus a lot more. That what was happening in the storage auction game. You buy five units. I mean, storage auctions was one of the only things I knew that you could spend 500 bucks by five units, 100 bucks each. Then you can go out and buy this other unit for another 100, and that one unit pays for everything else. I've never seen anything like it. All right, so uh, there isn't anything under there yet, but there will be. Um, this weekend, I'm going to finish the basic financial course. Then next week, we're going to start investing yourself, and the price will go up and all this. So that will link will be below. Plus, I, I got a very interesting comment today. I hadn't responded to it, but I haven't told people this, but I'm going to raise the price of the 100 hours of business game 25 bucks the people who buy they're like shocked because there's way more in there than what i've been telling people i've been understated selling so you may want to grab that because it's going to go up to 100 bucks and then this course is going to go up to 100 bucks because we're going to start rolling like we used to so if you need some help hustling you need to get started you know go ahead and get the 25 dollars package they'll give you plenty of ideas and if you want to let's talk about this um what I'm going to do in investing yourself in the third tier is get more into the LLC structure because so many people want to get an LLC and think that it's going to be profitable the first few months. It's not. Uh, it's going to be two, three, four, five, six years. And then but see, you will see the profitability. You will see the results. But the thing is, you got to start it now. And this is such a hard thing for so many people because it's like, I don't want to let that money go. I don't want to let that money go. I don't want to let that money go. But you have to let that money go. All right, so I will see you guys later. You have a good evening. Today is Thursday, and there will be probably one or two more streams tomorrow. So with that, I will see you guys later.